problem solved with the TPS 65131 prototype circuit board, I guess you could say. Pulling up the circuit board here first. Here we go. Look at that. A thing of beauty. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it except for uh, like this C16, C14. It, all the values are in the wrong plane, so they don't show up in this one. And that is some of the problem right here, specifically C5 and C6. C5 is the boost converter compensation capacitor. C6 is the positive feedback feed forward capacitor, I believe it's called. I call it a snubber. Because it uh, kind of keeps the spikes out of the uh, voltage, the feedback voltage, going back into the uh, regulator. So here's my original schematic. Notice C5, the compensation capacitor for the positive boost, the boost converter, C5 is 10 nanofarads. C6 is the feed forward capacitor for the positive feedback, FBP, feedback positive. 6.8 picofarads, remember that. 5 is 10, 6 is 6. Here is my circuit board layout. 5 is 10, 6 is 6. No, it's not. When I was laying out the boards, I had all the uh, components, what's called smashed in Eagle, where the text is separated from the actual component itself. So let's say the component was over here and I pulled C5 in, it came in, I pulled it, or I pulled in the part for it, and then I pulled in C5, then I pulled in 6.8 accidentally. Same thing with C6. They're right next to each other, so I probably didn't notice. I pulled in C6. I pulled in the part for it. I pulled in 10 nanofarad. Didn't notice it. Go back here to the data sheet. Again, you can see C6 down here, and this is C9 on this on this uh, schematic, but it's actually C5 on mine. On the feedback capacitor, on this thing right here, the snubber, you can be off a long way and it ain't gonna hurt much unless you're looking for some kind of crazy precision. But down here I wanted 10 nanofarads and I had 6.8 picofarads. That's you know four orders of magnitude off. The compensation is not gonna work with something that's a thousand times too small for what it, than what it should be. Basically it ain't compensating for shit. So all I had to do, it didn't cost me any money, it didn't cost me any money cost me nothing but a little bit of time. Let me go ahead and kill the lower layers again and some of the silk screen. Shut the grid off the top layer and the bottom layer. This is the way it should be. C6 is 6.8 picofarads. Just like C6. Oh, I got my stuff backwards again. My C6 is up here. My C5 is down here. Okay. Yeah, I almost screwed myself again. C6 is 6.8 picofarads. That's the feedback. If I show FBP, that capacitor is connected to it right there. And my compensation rail, my compensation line is CP down here. So if I show CP, that lights up. Go over here to the board, CP is right there. So in other words, when I installed them, I put the 10 here and the 6.8 over here. Completely bass backwards. And that's all there was to it. That was the whole problem. I plugged her in, worked like a champ. And I'm about to move over to this O-scope to show you what's what. And here I am back at the scopes again with a perfectly operating piece of equipment. <laughs> so, here's what I got now. I got that same load plugged into the uh, output of the chip. And the combination of everything comes out to be uh, 63 ohms. My positive and my negative rails are set up to output 12 volts. And I'll go ahead and DC couple those channels right now. So you can see the 12 volts. Now, okay, you can't really see the 12 volts, but uh, you can measure it. How's that? You can't see voltage. Here we go. It's uh, plus 12.1, 12.2, minus 11.97. I guess I can dial that down just a hair more. Everything had to warm up for a bit as I set these up or I dialed them in when, they were, when it was still cold, so I just redial them back to the same volts I had before. Okay, so now I got uh, negative 12.05, positive 12.0508, give or take. Close enough. 
for these purposes. And before I was running my power supplies at about 4 volts, now I'm, I'm running at 3.4 because that's about the bottom end of it at this load. I'm loading out the negative rail to its maximum for the input voltage. The positive rail still got quite a bit of headroom to go, so it regulates just fine for quite a while yet as I drop the voltage. So, I got 3.4 volts coming in off the power supply going through the leads. Clamped onto my battery jack. The multimeter, the BK2709B, is plugged into the circuit board itself. It's reading 3.356, meaning I got about uh, 44 millivolts of drop in there, give or take. We'll call it 50 millivolts of drop. And we'll DC couple the O-scope one more time. I keep saying one more time because this is probably going to be the last time I do this until I do the next uh, step, if you will. Come on, trigger. Squeal like a pig. Trigger. You pig. There we go. Had it. Now at any rate, 3.54 volts. This thing has definitely got to get calibrated because now it's 140 millivolts off that and it's almost 200 millivolts off that. i got to get this thing calibrated. I've only had it for about 10, 15 years. So anyway, let's go back to AC coupled here. We're going to look at the mess that used to be there is no longer there. It says 0.48 millivolts. That's not right. Come on, here we go. So let's jam that up a little bit. So we can see what's going on. See if I can get it to trigger. Come on. There it is. There we go. That's about that's what I expect to come off the, the uh voltage input rail. A little bit of wiggling like this. Which would be uh roughly Try that again. So that's about 33 millivolts and a little wiggle. And then these big spikes are about 337 millivolts. Again, this thing has to be calibrated, so I'll take it with a grain of salt. Uh, drops down about 145 millivolts, pops up about uh, almost 200 millivolts at the top of the spike there. And that's at the 1.3 megahertz uh, switching. 1.29 megahertz. That's at the switching speed of the chip of the TPS. 65131 chip itself. That's good. That's what I'd expect. Throw a big old bead on there or something. An inductor on the input of some sort. Golden. Again, here's your positive rail, here's your negative rail. Plus 12.1 volts, minus 12.0103. Let's go ahead and AC couple the Positive rail, the one I was always having trouble with. I'm going to shut off channel 2 here. Center it up. And we're at 10 volts per division here. 5, 2, 500 millivolts, 200 millivolts. By now we'd already see a, a couple of divisions worth. There's 100 millivolts for the slop. I mean per division. 50 millivolts per division. 20, 10, 5. That's 2 millivolts per division. That's telling me I got uh, roughly 10 millivolts of noise in there. And not only that, if I maybe I can get it to trigger today. Probably not. Let's switch over to A. Okay, I'm at AC coupling. Channel 1. Tell you what, I'm just going to stop motion it. That's about what I'd expect to see on the positive output rail there. Okay, so let it keep running, shut off channel 1, AC couple channel 2, which is the negative rail, center it up. And again, the other, here, that's channel 1 at 5 millivolts per division. 5 volts, 2 volts, 1, half a volt, 200 millivolt, 100, 50, 20, 10 millivolts per division. That's exactly what I think I'd see. And it says I got about 27 millivolts of a... Uh, uh, ripple in there, switching noise, etc. That's easily filterable downstream if you even worry about it. In my case, I'm going to be using a 14 bit ADC downstream, so yeah, I kind of got to worry about it down to the millivolt level. 
Um, but for anything else, unless you're doing some kind of crazy audio that, uh, and you don't have any decoupling capacitors in there whatsoever, that's fine. And this is a full load as well. Full load is a relative term. Full load on the negative rail at this input voltage. Uh, I'd say it's about half load for the positive rail at this input voltage. I'm going to go ahead and crank up the input voltage to 4. 4 volts. Which is about the mid-range for this chip. And probably see it or maybe not. The noise on the positive rail is about 10 millivolts and noise on the negative rail is about 20 millivolts. And my switching noise is still or my switching speed is still the same. If I reject the noise, no if I reject the high freak, it won't trigger. Of course it won't trigger. That'll trigger. But that'll show me what my peak to peak on the input is, ish. Bandwidth. 148 millivolts, but get it oh hey it triggered. How about that? 150 millivolts on the input. Take a knock, knock that down in the middle of it. Take out the sw the major switching noise. 18 millivolts of slop on the input. Efficiency. Follow along with the math if you will, if you can. This is what kind of impresses me, really, being that this is my design, and I don't have any formal training. I'm guessing at it, basically. The DP832 is putting out 4 volts at 1.41 amp. As it says over here, 4 volts, 1.41 amp, 5.64 watts. My output side is plus or minus 12 volts. At 63 ohms gives me 190 milliamps per rail. So 12 times 0.19 is 2.28 watts per rail. So that's 4.56 watts output divided by the 5.64 watts input. 80.85106% efficiency. But that's with the voltage coming off the DP832 not including the drop I get going through the cable going here. So the meter over here, there it is, show me 3.964. And I know that ammeter, that ammeter right there, isn't exactly right either. It's going to be showing a little bit high. Burden voltage, uh, I don't know. It just never has seemed to be perfectly right on the money. So 3.964, wait a minute. What was my output again? 12 times 0.19 times 2. And 4.56 watts out divided by 3.964 volts divided by 1.41 amps. 81.58%. It's even that much better. And what even gets me more, I'm going to go ahead and DC couple this uh, negative rail so I can see what's going on. May as well DC couple the AC rail or the positive rail so I can see what's going on there as well. Center them both up. Bring them both down into view somewhere, somehow. Okay. Yeah, show them minus 12.4. So as, as soon as I lose regulation on that, I'll stop going down. Because it's stuck at, it, it's at 12.4 right now. And if I go up there around 5 volts on the uh, input, the efficiency goes up another few percentage points. I sat there and graphed it out and it follows the data sheet right on the money. I'm relatively impressed. Okay, 12.4 volts down to 3.5 on the input. As soon as I lose it, I'm going to quit going. Okay, I just lost it. 12.2. So I'm going to start going back up. I'm at 3.47. And it looks like I lose it right at about 3.46 at max load on the D on the negative rail. So 3.46 at the at the power supply is 3.417 here. Remember I had 4.6 watts in, 4.56 watts in, divided by 3.41 call it 7 volts, 
divided by 1.76 amps. seventy five point eight two percent efficient which is better than the data sheet shows so by quite a bit I think the data sheet shows I should only get about be getting about sixty sixty five percent something like that so BAM if anybody gets that reference good on you that's all problem solved I got these other two boards here that I built up earlier same thing TPS uh, 65 131 boards you're going to focus there. You're going to keep changing focus. Yeah, go with it. I got these two here. Guess what I already fixed before I finished building them up. Damn. Yeah. I'm happy. The thermals ain't too bad either. The chip doesn't heat up hardly at all. Oh, that's one thing I forgot. To, um, if you look at the back of this board when it focuses, if it focuses. Come on. See them five vias right there? Those are thermal vias going to the pad, the VSUN 20 chip there, because that, that's a power chip. That's got an exposed thermal pad on the bottom. And drilled five vias, I was able to solder up the chip by putting my soldering iron with a fat blade on it, pushed up against the bottom good and hard with solder paste on the top and after the solder melted the chip just kind of went and it was locked right where it should be all the solder spread out real nice and it just piece of cake to solder so the first one I did I tried hot air and that worked it worked just fine but using the solder gun with solder paste on top and just heating the board through with the chip laying on top zinged it right into place that's it problem solved Happy guy.